in Philly, a St. Joe's win over St. Bonaventure completes a perfect regular season. They love Jameer Nelson in Philly. Here's why. First half, Nelson for three. And the Hawks are up early. Next possession. Look at Nelson. Right to the rack. Finger rolls anyone. St. Joe's pulling away after beating the Bonnies by 51 in January. Cross over there. Hawks up 23-8. Some bad Bonaventure defense here. Nelson. Chet Stachitis. And look at the space here. You've got to come out and play the basketball. Somebody come on out and play D. Stachitis, 14 of a 16 in the first half. Bonnie's leading scorer, Marcus Green, without a field goal in the first half. He's only 5'7". His shorts are 5'9". Very long. Yeah. Second half, Nelson moving without the basketball. That's fundamentally sound. John Bryant finds him. St. Joe's up 66-29. And then Nelson, in transition, is open for Thorpe. He finished with 25. Phil Martelli, 27-0. He, too, a huge Jameer Nelson fan. Somebody's going to score more points. Somebody's going to have more assists. Somebody's going to have more steals. But, but, the number 14 will never be worn by a Hawk again. Like Coach said, we got nine games to go. And I asked him, you know, I knew the jersey was supposed to be retired. I asked him, you know, <laughs> to, keep it, to keep it on my back and don't put it up into the rafters until after the season. You know, to the banquet because, like I said, we got unfinished business here. They did it. They'll head into the A-10 tournament off a perfect 27-0 regular season. St. Joe's becomes just the fourth team since Indiana ran the table in 76 to complete the regular season unbeaten. The previous three all went on to win their conference tournaments. Stanford can join this list with victories at Washington State on Thursday and at Washington on Saturday. The Cardinal out in front and still perfect atop the Pac-10. Providence hosting Pittsburgh. Both teams a half game behind UConn for the Big East lead. And a football field to this game at the Dunkin' Donuts Center in Providence. Carl Krauser to Chevy Troutman. Chevy like a rock. Panthers up by nine. Krauser to Troutman again. 23 for Troutman. Panthers trying to rebound from Sunday's loss to Syracuse. Friars trying to keep their six-game winning streak going, but they were getting run out of their own building. Mark McCarroll, the freshman Chris Taft, two of his 24. It's a 13-point Pittsburgh lead. More long passing here. You know, this is something that Coach Jamie Dixon has been stressing in practice. If you could beat the defense down the floor, it would be real good for you. So that's all me, Chevy, and Mark was trying to do when we was in there, just trying to beat, the, beat them down the floor and look for the ball. Pittsburgh and Connecticut tied for the Big East lead. Each still has one game to go. Auburn visiting fifth-ranked Mississippi State on senior night at the Humphrey Center. Timmy Bowers honored. Bulldogs hot shooting beyond the arc. That was the story. Winsome Frazier. 26 points for Winsome Frazier. You win some, you lose some, oh. but on this night, it was all Winsome. You like that, Steve? Nicely done. Thank you. Mississippi State, 14 of 30 from three-point range. Frazier had six threes in the first half alone. Bulldogs making a great case for a number one seed. How about Bowers? The buzzer beating three. Bowers at 15. Bulldogs were in command second half. Brandon Vincent. No, can't find it, but Shane Power. Oh, yeah. Mississippi State sets a season high for points with 105, and they clinch a share of the SEC title. Michigan State with a chance to clinch at least a share of the Big Ten title, hosting Wisconsin. Badgers up five at halftime. They were 19-0 when leading at the break. Second half, Paul Davis. Well, he's open underneath. You got to get a body on Paul Davis. He had 25 points and 10 boards, but later in the half, Davis, poor guy, you know, limps back up the court. He would have to leave with leg cramps and could not return to the game. He said, every time I stood up, my body locked up. I mean, he just couldn't move. That just was like it for you. him. Oh, I'm getting old. Under a minute to play, here's Devin Harris, and he's pulling up for a throw. He had 18, we're tied at 52. Still tied. Harris along the baseline. This will win it for the Badgers. Newton. Nah, quite a good overtime. Under a minute, no T. Clayton Hansen for three. Wisconsin wins 68-64. State ready to unveil their Big Ten title banner. That's going to have to wait. Wake Forest, the ACC's hottest team, six straight wins, invaded Virginia. Late second half, Wake down two, Jamal Levy. He gets foul going for the ball off a rebound. The 19th foul against the Cavs. The ref calls for a one and one, right? Levy misses the free throw, but both teams thinks it's two shots. Gary Forbes gets the board and walks. It's a travel, Wake ball. 
On the possession, Justin Gray, he had 20 points, tie game. Still tied, 25 seconds left. Virginia ball, Todd Billet waiting. Now, in Virginia's last three wins, check it out, picture in picture, Todd Billet hit the game-winning three-pointer against Georgia Tech. He also did the same against Clemson, and he also did the same against North Carolina. So let's go to this game, right? Deeks know all about that. They forced Billet to give it up to Devin Smith. Superman! And They call Devin Smith Superman. Now you know why. Virginia wins. Smith with 15. Wake just 12 for 24 from the line. Sticking in the ACC, 16th ranked North Carolina looking to go 50 and 0 at all time at home against Clemson. They know it. They've lost 49 straight games at Chapel Hill dating back to this year, 25-26. Calvin Coolidge was president. Oh, by the way, Al Capone takes over Chicago bootlegging business, and yeah, Babe Ruth hospitalized for yeah eating too many hot dogs to this game. Richard McCants came in averaging 22 points a game. He topped that all right. McCants draining the three. Overall, he was 11 of 19 from the field, but his story was from downtown. McCants sizzled eight three-pointers, matching the school record. He was tremendous. He finished with 30 points. McCants helps the Heels go 50-0 and at home against Clemson, second largest NCAA streak ever for the seventh straight season. Senior night in Morgantown. The senior Jonathan Curran put it in the last minute before the first half ends. And wow, he's a top 10 nominee with that buzzer beater. Mountaineers down one at the break, but Orangeman took over second half. Jerry McNamara, oh. he had 14. That was sweet. And then later in the second half, McNamara sharing with his good buddy, Akeem Warwick. His 12th double-double, 25 points, 10 boards. Where would Syracuse be without Akeem Warwick? Don't even think about it. Huh. Jim Beheim, I know, Jim Beheim with his 26th, 20 victory season. For more on Tuesday's College Hoop, Jay Billis with his final analysis. Georgia Tech, a team that had beaten 15 straight, and a gym that had won 41 consecutive. First half, Luol Deng goes right at Luke Schencher. And Schencher right back at you. 11 blocks for Tech on the night. Coach K would like to discuss the no, tall, no call. How about talking about a technical foul, Coach? He gets teed up. Another look, and Schencher uh, sure made contact. Dang, apparently never recovered. Shot just one for 14. Coach K changed shirts, hoping to change his team's line. Ishmael Muhammad goes top 10 nomination on the Cameron Crazies. Muhammad cock locked and ready to rock. Tech hadn't won a Cameron since January of 1996, or when J.J. Redick was eight years younger. Pure shooter. We are tied with seven minutes to play, but after a couple freebies, Schencher scored six straight, including this dunk off the Marvin Lewis feed, and then we need a shot. Jack to finish off the upset. Jarrett Jack with a team high 15, 76 68 Georgia Tech. But Steve Lavin says, despite the loss, Duke can still be a number one seed. Despite Duke's loss to Georgia Tech tonight, the Blue Devils will still receive a number one seed in the NCAA tournament if they can beat North Carolina and Cameron Indoor Stadium and make it to the championship game of the ACC Conference Tournament. A couple impressive streaks, snap, but looking forward to Saturday, Duke hosts UNC. Over the last 20 years, Blue Devils are 19-4 and four in home games following a home loss. Now, Duke and Tech had already responded in the affirmative to attend the dance of 65. Many others still waiting for their invites, right, Linda? Oh, are you so right. Can a team that lost to Belmont make the tournament? Missouri at Texas Tech. Bob Knight knows all about this. Texas Tech down one. Wow, Ross, the runner. 19 points by Ross. Texas Tech now up by one. Later second half, Texas Tech running away with it. See what I mean? Robert Tomasek. As the play continues, we go off the inbound. Tomasek with a steal. The feed to his good buddy, Andre Emmett. It's a top 10 nominee. Emmett with 28 points. And then more Texas Tech. Jarius Jackson. J.J. going to the hoop. Nobody picks him up. He had 19, and Texas Tech had a victory. Jaime Lareda, LSU's leading scorer, out for the season. Left heel injury with Adam. LSU took on Ole Miss. Minor doesn't fall. Then Daryl Mitchell can't find it. LSU shot 20% in the first half. They were 0 for 7 from three-point range, 5 for 24 from the field, 10 points in the first half. Different story, second half. The Tigers shot 68%. Mitchell with two of his 14. Tie game, just over two minutes to go. Off the steal, Regis Kunja. LSU escapes embarrassment and blows out Ole Miss. 
Georgia and Florida, both teams bubbly, perhaps Bulldogs more so, but going flat. Gators off the steal. Anthony Roberson, he went one for 11 last time these two played. Went for 19 Wednesday. Florida up nine. Five minutes left. Georgia now up two. Going to double that after the turnover and the Damian Wilkins slammer. Florida responds, Matt Walsh. He will tie the game, he had 22. And remember Christian Dreyer? Yeah. He quit Florida the day after the team lost to Georgia. Team has not lost since. David Lee finishes the highlight, and the Gators finish the dog, 63-55. Staying in the SEC, Alabama on the bubble and looking for a win at Arkansas. Tied, needing a three to tie, Antoine Petway. Nails it, he had nine points, first tie of the game. Alabama was down as many as 22 in this one. We go to OT, tied up, just over 30 seconds to go. Oh, Kennedy Winston hits the J. Crimson tied by two. Arkansas now needing a three to tie this thing up again and send it into double OT. Monica shot down and back out. So Alabama gets the huge come from behind victory. Impressive stuff to keep their hopes alive. Conference USA may send as many as six teams to the tournament. Alabama Birmingham going after insurance in its 18th win at South Florida. Terrence Leather. Goes to the free throw line with a chance to take the lead after hitting 18 of his 20 in the second half. He makes it, no bull. Six seconds left, one point game. UAB's ball and UAB's Sydney ball. Ball game! UAB 61 59 and another notch in its tournament ready belt. Maryland trying to keep the bubble floating, trying to stay alive for the NCAA tournament bid on the road at NC State. First half, John Gilchrist, the inbound. Off of Elian Eftimov's back, he gets it back for the score. What a play. Second half tie game, Gilchrist pokes it away from Elian Eftimov and gets it for the dunk. 21 points for Gilchrist. Meanwhile, last chance for the Wolfpack to first Maryland's bubble. Levi Watkins, no, to tie. Out of bounds, though, off Maryland, so state ball. Marcus Melvin, so dangerous, but not there. Melvin with 22. Melvin again to tie. No way Maryland hangs on. Next up for the Terps, Virginia at home Sunday. Indiana host of Michigan Wolverines need wins bad to make the tournament unless they win the conference tournament. Down three after the Bracey Wright three. Indiana has lost four straight home games. Up three now with 20 seconds to play. Daniel Horton, he can tie it, but he can't make it. But Wright couldn't help ice it from the free throw line, so Michigan still has a chance. Bernard Robinson Jr., no. Courtney Sims gathers the spill. George Leach, one of his seven blocks. Hoosiers, 61-56. Michigan in bubble trouble, but they are not alone. South Carolina Cats beat the Gamers by one point last month. Quieted the crowd in this one with plays like this. Antoine Barber, the Duncan Donut, and the top ten play nomination. Second half, push play and record the Cliff Hawkins family. One of his 11 assists, Kalena Azabuki done the rest. Hawkins scored a career-high 21 points. Kentucky with a season-high 13 threes, 13 of 22 from distance. This is all Hawkins. His shooting key to 15-0 run. Hawkins with a career high five threes and seven attempts. Senior point guard said afterwards the fellas can call him DOC, dead on the catch. South Carolina dead at home. Lewis Hinnant takes it down the lane, fakes the dish, and Hinnant jams at home. Boston College down three. They struggled early, believe it or not, against St. John's, but in the second half, the Eagles were fired up. Steve Haley, the feed to Craig Smith. Smith was 17, Boston College up eight. And then the Eagles were looking to put St. John's away on the break. Hit in the bounce pass to Jared Dudley. Dudley with two of his 12 points. He had seven boards. Boston College with its third 20-win season in four years. Big 10, number 20, Illinois, visiting Purdue. Overtime, under 15 seconds. Line up three, Kenneth Lowe, and behold, we are tied. He had 23. Illinois, chance to win. We arrow Luther head. He throws the cross-court pass to Roger Powell, who misses the lay-in, but look who's there to gather the spill. Luther head with less than a second left. You youngsters always play to the final bell. Illinois wins at 81-79. They beat Ohio State on Sunday. They get the regular season Big Ten title.
18th ranked Kansas hosting Nebraska. Cornhuskers believe their bubble list just beat the Jayhawk out of KU earlier this season, but it was senior night in Lawrence. Wayne Simeon, not a senior, but he still celebrated like one. KU celebrated his 22 points and announcement afterwards that he will return for his senior season. He and Aaron Miles keyed a 16-zip run. Miles became the school's second all-time assist man on that play. Senior Jeff Graves came to play from the doghouse to the penthouse. He had 10 in Kansas. 78-67 winners. Well, Oklahoma needs to take out Texas A&M. OU up 13 to 2 first half on an 11 zip run where the Sooners Jason Dietrich. 15 to 2 to start this game. They were on cruise control where the Sooners Dietrich for three. Sooners would lead by 15 at recess. Second half scary moment for OU Dietrich. While planning his foot, he turns an ankle. Dietrich had to go to the bench. He stayed there. He scored 12 points on 5 for 9 shooting. D'Angelo Alexander along the baseline. Alexander with 17. Oklahoma with a huge victory. We go to Pullman with Seattle still to come. Looking to tie that Pac-10 record. 26 straight wins. They got 25 and counting. Second half tied at 31. Marcus Moore. Diff Barron baseline jam. Washington State by two and battling. Stanford down six. Matt Lodick, Rob Little. Good pass underneath. Stanford down. Thomas Kalati, long three. Cougars by one, and this began a run for the Cougars. 46-43, Randy Green, three ball. Uh-oh, Washington State by six, unbeaten season, Jeopardy. 51-50, Moore, big time three. They were playing composed, 54-50. 35 to play, Stanford down three. Chris Hernandez. He never does that. Loses it out of bounds. Turnover, Stanford. 20 to play, Stanford down big. Danny Grunfeld in the corner. Nails a three. Late foul called. A big four-point play, and Stanford's down one. 17 to play. You gotta be kidding. Washington State gets called for a five-second violation. Disaster. Stanford gets the ball back. 17 on the clock. Remember, it was Nick Robinson who beat Arizona back in February. In March, Robinson wants to get rid of it. Hernandez lost the handle. It's picked up by Lottick. Loose ball. Diving for the ball. Lottick gets it to Robinson. You got three seconds. Lottick's got to take a shot. He fires it up. He got it. Oh, he oh got my God. God. Can you believe it? Cardinal wins. Robinson held the ball like a hot potato. He found Matt Lodick. This was a team that could not make any threes in this game. However, they stay unbeaten and watch the ball go on the floor. And it's Robinson who had it and said, I don't want it. Lodick got open and what a phenomenal shot as Stanford now has one more game to finish the Pac-10 regular season unbeaten. Phenomenal stuff. Linda Cove with a former Pac-10 coach, Steve Lavin. Paul to move back into a tie for first with Memphis and Conference USA. Yet yeah, DePaul fans know they're on the bubble. Coming into play, DePaul 17 and 8, 10 and 4 in Conference USA. An RPI of 53, 86 for the strength of schedule. Key wins at Louisville against Memphis, against UAB. With their bubble burst, Jason Maxiel. Oh my goodness. Cincinnati down three. Second half, Drake Diener goes to work. Double D with DePaul down one. Diener. From distance, that's NBA range. DePaul up two later in the second half. More of Diener. Pump fake. What a move creating and hitting the J. 17 points for Diener. He was not done. It was all Diener, and he imposed his will to lift DePaul for the big victory. And yes, go ahead, fans, storm the court. Crushing blow for the Bearcats, who probably were looking ahead to Memphis coming up this weekend for a battle of first. Now that battle for first not taking place, really. Leader Princeton at Harvard, second half, Kevin Rogus. Oh, Kevin Rogus open for Hart. He had 15. Kevin Rogus will just eat you alive with those threes. Andre Logan picks up the loose ball. Princeton down three. It's a ball game. Tied at 51. 125 to go. Scott Greenman. The go-ahead three. 14 for the Green Man. Princeton would not trail again. John Thompson's Tigers clinch at least a tie for the Ivy League title. They're up two with two games to go.